So a ruler is pivoted at the, about its left end, and its right end is at the location r equals negative 2i hat plus 5j hat plus 3k hat meters. So we're going to do this in three dimensions. So one of the ends of the ruler is at the or origin, and the other end of the ruler is at negative 2 plus 5 plus 3. Then we're going to say a force is applied to the ruler three-fifths of the way from the left end. And the force is uh, equal to Six i hat minus two j hat minus k hat newtons, and uh, now we can ask a bunch of questions. Then on this, we can say. What is the moment of inertia of the ruler about the left po uh, point, about the pivot point, B, what is the angle between what is the angle between the force and the ruler between the F and ruler C what is the torque exerted by this force What is the torque exerted by this force? Then we can ask, uh, assuming that this torque is, will stay constant, what will be the angular momentum of the, if the magnitude of torque stays constant, what is L? in uh, six seconds. So what is the angular momentum in after six seconds? And then E, what is omega final in six seconds? So the ruler is going to be spinning. This is a three-dimensional uh, uh, thing going on. So the ruler is going to be spinning. And we want to find out what is the spin rate, or the omega of the ruler. OK, so let's go back to the first part, part A. What is the moment of inertia of the ruler about the pivot point? Now, it's pivoting about its left end. So we can use the moment of inertia of a rod about its end, which is what? What is the moment of inertia of a? uniform rod about the end point. This is a good review for the test Monday. One third ML squared, exactly. 
right? Did I give you the, no, I didn't give you the mass of the, let's give you the mass here. Uh, ruler, so let's say it's five kilogram. So one third times five times the length squared, right? So we go over here, one third times uh, five times what's the length? Well, what the problem tells you is that it says that the other end of the rod is at the location negative two plus five plus three, right? So now the length squared is the magnitude of the r squared, right? So uh, two squared plus uh, five squared plus three squared. So you take the magnitude of the r, each component of the r, and then you square it, you add them up. So that's going to be the i about the end point. Four plus twenty-five. That's twenty-nine plus nine is uh, thirty-eight. So multiply that out. So what's that equal to? Sixty three point three kilogram meter squared. Okay? Okay, part B. What is the angle between the force and the ruler? Okay? Now what's the best way to find the angle between any two vectors? We can actually do it using the cross product or the dot product, right? Which of the two is better? The answer starts with D, the dot product, yeah. The dot product is the better method to find the angle. Cosine theta is A dotted into B over magnitude A, magnitude B. The other method would have been sine of theta is magnitude of A crossed into B over magnitude A, magnitude B. So there's two ways of finding the angle between any two vectors. Sine theta is the magnitude of the cross product. Cosine theta is the dot product. And I'm saying that the cosine is the better method. <coughs> Anyone know why? Why? <laughs> Any, ha, anyone gone up to Calc 3 yet or done a lot of that stuff? Actually, you don't need to be in Calc 3 to know that. How about anyone done trig? Anyone know about inverse cosine versus inverse sine function? The range of inverse cosine versus the range of inverse sine. What's the range of the inverse sine function? Yeah, sine function, the range of the inverse sine function is minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So if the angle between two vectors is greater than pi over 2, 